In early 239, when Cao Fang became enthroned, both Sima Yi and Cao Shuang held 3,000 troops each, and served as the regents for the underage emperor. Cao Ruibi's third wife and second empress became Empress Dowager Guo over her adopted son Cao Fang, but not his regent. How she felt about this was unclear, as her political input around this time appears to be minimal. Both regents formally submitted important matters to her, but they decided on the decisions themselves, without any real input from her. Sima Yi was appointed as a palace attendant and manager of the Masters of Writing, granted imperial authority, and ordered to oversee military affairs inside and outside the capital city. Cao Shuang wanted the Masters of Writing to report to him, however, so he recommended that Sima Yi was appointed to be the irregularly filled Grand Marshal instead. Knowing that the previous Grand Marshals had all died in office, the Imperial Court thought it would be more appropriate to make Sima Yi the Grand Tutor instead. Despite this setback, he received additional privileges similar to those granted to Tao Tao, in that he did not have to walk briskly when he entered the Imperial Court. He didn't have to have his name announced, and was allowed to wear shoes and carry a sword whilst court was in session. Sima Shi was asked to become a regular mounted attendant, whilst three more of Sima Yi's relatives were granted Marquis titles. Another four were appointed as cavalry commandants, but Sima Yi ordered all of his relatives to decline the honours and appointments. In the spring of 239, the ancient Japanese known as the Wa at the time, the Karasa, Wei Shu, and some Xi'an Bei tribes came to pay tribute to the Cao Wei state. Cao Fang attributed this to the efforts of his subjects, many of whom were awarded, including Sima Yi. He also suggested to put an end to the extravagant palace construction and renovation that his father had started, to divert those resources and manpower to agriculture instead, and the court approved. Throughout the 240s, new groups of intellectuals largely headed by He Yan wanted to oppose the traditional Confucian principles. This associate of Cao Shuang and grandson of He Jin wanted to do away with the pointless formalities in society. Interestingly, when He Yan was about six, his mother was taken as a concubine by Cao Cao. As a result of his adoption, he spent a considerable amount of time alongside Cao Cao. He was raised with the other princes of Wei, where Cao Pi resented him, and called him a false son instead of his real name. Sima Yi became a leading representative of men from good families, who sought to promote the traditional type of Confucian morality and restraint in politics and society. In 241, Sun Quan launched a three-pronged invasion against Wei. Xu Gejin and Zhu Ran attacked Fan Cheng in Xiangyang, whilst Lu Zun attacked Xu Chun. These two attacks had the objective to wear down Wei's defences, which would allow Sun Quan to lead his army into Xu province. Sima Yi wanted to lead troops to resist the enemy, but the other officials argued there was no need for swift action, as Fan Cheng's defences were strong, and the enemy had marched a long way. He disagreed by highlighting that Fan Cheng had been under attack for more than a month without relief, and that this was a precarious situation for the defenders. He was allowed to lead a campaign to fight the Wu invaders, but knew he could not linger for too long because of the summer heat. When he arrived at Fan Cheng, he sent a light cavalry unit to harass the Wu army, whilst his main force remained in position. The tired and injured Wei soldiers were granted the privilege to bathe in the water to rest up, whilst he sent a crack unit of hand-picked soldiers, along with some other volunteers, to climb the city walls and help curb the enemy siege. When he heard about the infiltration unit, Zhu Ran retreated his soldiers overnight, so Sima Yi ordered his main army to pursue them. They chased them to a meeting point of three separate rivers, then defeated over 10,000 Wu soldiers, captured their boats and many resources. When Zhu Ran was defeated in the Battle of Fan Cheng, Sun Quan ordered the complete withdrawal of the Wu armies, bringing an end to their three-pronged attack. When Sima Yi triumphantly returned north, his celebration banquet was held at Wan City by a palace attendant. He received two more counties to his mark estate, now making it four in total. It covered 10,000 taxable households, plus 11 of Sima Yi's relatives were also in fiefed as Marquis. As Sima Yi gained greater glory for his clan, he behaved less arrogantly. One day at court, he met with Chang Lin from his hometown, who had come from humble beginnings. Sima Yi bowed to him and treated him in a respectful manner, and constantly reminded his siblings, children and younger relatives to be mindful of their conduct. In the year 242, when Sima Yi was 63 years old, his father, Sima Fang, was granted a posthumous title. He proposed an idea to dig a canal from the Yellow to the Bian Rivers to direct their waters towards the southeast, which would promote agriculture growth in that area. An alternate account to the Book of Jin attributes this idea to Deng Ai, who suggested it to Sima Yi. Only then did Sima petition it to the state. 
Whenever there was a battle in the southeast, the Wei armies would quickly travel downstream to counter the enemy. Xu Geke was currently stationed in Wan County, where he planned a major attack on Xu Chun. He holed up in a heavily fortified position with an abundance of supplies. Sima Yi saw this prepared Wu garrison as a threat and wanted to attack it, but many officials disagreed with him. They thought it would quickly get reinforced, which would put the attackers in a bad situation, but Sima Yi had a deeper insight. Knowing the Wu troops are adept at naval warfare, and that the waters are too shallow in the winter for the boats to sail through, he knew that the reinforcements would have to arrive by the land, so he wanted to test attacking their land-based garrison to see what happens. If they truly knew their strengths, then they would abandon this garrison and retreat. This is our objective. In October of 243, Xu Goku positioned his soldiers in preparation for the planned attack, so Sima Yi marched a counterforce from Luoyang to attack Wan County and defend Xu Chun. By the time they got to Xu County, Sun Chuan ordered Zhu Geke to pull back to Chai San, so he was forced to burn the stockpiled supplies, abandon the garrison at Wan and retreat. Despite his withdrawal, Zhu Geke became more famous within Wu for wanting to stand up to Sima Yi, who had a huge reputation in Wei. Lu Zun warned him and became concerned about his recklessness. Sima Yi had just achieved his target of destroying the source of food for Wu in the Hua River region. Feeling more at ease, he implemented the Tanshan policy, large-scale agricultural works and irrigation projects in the region. The next year, he was honoured at Huainan Commandery by an emissary sent by Cao Fang for his continued achievements. Throughout the years, Cao Shuang only briefly paid respects to Sima Yi based on his high status and seniority. He put on an appearance of respecting Sima, but effectively pushed him aside and became the dominant figure in governing the empire. He became largely viewed as an incompetent man, who entrusted many of his associates who were equally lacking in ability. He put his brothers in command of the military, promoted his close aides in the court, and made changes to the political structure to benefit himself and his clique. He also silenced those who stood against him, their associates, and their combined interests. Using this method, he had Sima Yi appointed to be the Grand Tutor, a title which held no real authority. Cao Shuang could then take up the vacant title of Manager of the Masters of Writing, but his attempts to further strengthen his grip on the political scene were somewhat hindered by Sima Yi. Through careful appointments to some of his aides to certain positions, Sima Yi was able to effectively retain much of his political influence. For instance, Deng Ai's talents had been recognised, so he had him transferred to the position of the Prefect of the Masters of Writing. This allowed Sima Yi to meet with Deng Ai in order to still supervise the edicts and memorials. Also, after the death of Man Chong, one of Sima Yi's long-serving associates, Xiang Shi, was appointed to the position of Grand Commandant. His loyalties towards Sima Yi made his unit of men very valuable in the coup against Cao Shuang later on. In 244, Deng Yang and Li Sheng advised Cao Shuang to invade Xu, which led to his loss at the Battle of Xing Shi. Sima Zhao participated in this disastrous campaign, where he managed to drive off a night raid on his camp. Sima Yi had strongly objected to this campaign earlier on due to the lack of, and where it was implemented, poor planning, but he was ignored. After their defeat, Sima Yi scorned Xie Hao Shuan and the others in a letter because their reckless actions would lead to everyone's destruction. Xie Hao became anxious, so he urged Cao Shuang to fall back, which he eventually did, but unlike his father in previous years, he incurred even more losses during his poorly executed retreat. Despite their failure, Sima Zhao was still promoted to the rank of Consultant Gentleman, which was typically seen as a placeholder title, one which he held for over five years. This was most likely Cao Shuang's attempt to keep Sima Zhao from further political advancement. In 246, Cao Fang granted Sima Yi the privilege of riding in an imperial carriage when he enters the court, which was usually only reserved for the emperor. When the Wu army invaded Zhang, 10,000 households of Wei citizens fled to the northern side of the Han River, looking for safety from the fighting. At the capital, Sima Yi agreed that they were right to seek shelter and should be allowed to remain here. He explained how the incoming Wu armies could easily cut off the passages into Zhang, reinforce the area, then relocate the people, but Cao Shuang disagreed. He didn't think it was in their long-term interests to allow the citizens to remain, and that they should not give up on saving Zhang, so he had them sent back. The Wu forces acted exactly how Sima Yi had predicted, by capturing Zhang, then relocating the 10,000 households to Wu territory. In 247, Cao Shuang started spending much more time away on tours, away from the important matters of the state. By now, he had gathered great wealth for himself and his associates. 
He still wanted to further dominate the Wei government, however, so he made further moves to concentrate power for himself and his clique. He took the advice of He Yan, Deng Yang, and Deng Mi to relocate Empress Dowager Guo to Yongning Palace so she could not interfere with state politics. Sima Yi was unable to stop this and some other improper political manoeuvres, so the relationship between the two became severely stressed. The people of Luoyang started saying, He Yan, Deng Yang, and Deng Mi create great trouble in the imperial capital. Cao Shuang became increasingly distrustful and wary of Sima Yi, who said that he was ill and then withdrew himself from politics. For eight years now, the princes of Xinghe and Pingyuan had been arguing over a land dispute whilst putting their cases forward to Sun Li, the governor of Ji province. He went to visit Sima Yi to consult him about a map that was made when the Pingyuan prince was granted his title. Although Sima agreed this helps the prince's case, Cao Shuang still favoured the prince of Xinghe, so he dismissed Sun Li's appeal. He became furious, then wrote a strongly worded memorial to the court, but Cao Shuang became even more angry himself, so he had Sun Li banished for five years. In the year 248, the power struggle between the two regents turned serious. A palace eunuch named Zhang Dang illegally transferred 11 women out of the imperial harem and presented them to Cao Shuang to be his concubines. His clique presumed it would go unnoticed because Sima Yi was seriously ill, but even then, they still acted with caution and were still wary. They did not lower their guard against him as they started to plot with the eunuch Zhang Dang to overthrow the emperor and put Cao Shuang on the throne. Towards the end of this year, Sima Shi and maybe Sima Zhao also started plotting with their father against the Cao. Li Sheng was reassigned to Jing province by Cao Shuang, but he was sent to visit Sima Yi first to see if he was actually as sick as he claimed he was. He pretended to be frail and senile as he greeted his guest who saw that he could not move or dress himself without help from his servants. When he later learned Sima Yi could not even eat porridge without soiling himself, he said, Everyone thought your illness was a minor one. Alas, who expected you to be in such poor health? Sima Yi coughed and panted as he warned Li Sheng about going to Bing province as it was near barbarian territory and bound to be dangerous. Li Sheng corrected him as he wasn't going to Bing, but he was going home to Jing. Sima Yi pretended to continue to mishear him, so he repeated, My home is in Jing province. I'm so old and weak that I can't even hear you properly. Now that you are headed home, it's time for you to make some glorious achievements. When he heard this, Li Sheng was convinced that Sima Yi was no longer of sound mind and would soon die. He later told Cao Shuang, There is nothing to worry about. It's sad to see that the Grand Tutor is no longer in a good state of health to serve. Cao Shuang was put into a false sense of security and then lowered his guard against Sima Yi. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.